since humanity was wiped out. Dude, things have been real quiet ever since.
Good evening, everybody. So I'm going to do a quick uh, mic test here. If you folks don't mind, just go ahead and type in chat and let me know how we sound. Um, it's very important that we're able to get some audience interaction this evening because our wonderful uh, students uh, created a interactive uh, animation via YouTube. So we would be really excited. Um, <laughs> Awesome, so we, we definitely have people in chat who are able to type away, so that's great. So how are we sounding, folks? Can I get a, uh, a, some feedback? How am I sounding? Pretty good? Okay. Something. I'll wait. <laughs> Sounds great, thank you, thank you. All right, wonderful. So. Uh, we're going to start this off like we have for our streams the last couple days. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, allow for everybody to have an opportunity to introduce themselves. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Keegan. I'm the game art professor here at uh, the Columbus College of Art and Design. Um, and this is a project that came out of the uh, Anim Lab from, uh, obviously, from 2019. So uh, I'm going to let the team do the introductions. Um, you can see their names up there, but I would love for you to hear from them because you're going to be hearing from them for the uh, remainder of this segment. Um, I do want to say that I'm super excited to be presenting these folks, um, or to be presenting them, for them to be presenting. Um, I'm not presenting anything. Um, but uh, what we usually do is that we have folks go around, uh, name your, uh, what you're studying, although maybe that might be a little obvious, um, and what you... Um, Sorry, I've done this twice and I'm already goofing. So we'll go around, we'll have you introduce yourselves, name and your uh, your year, and then what you're studying. So let's start. Uh, hello, my name is uh, AJ Kamey. I am a 2D animation major and I'm a senior. I'm Andrew Thomas, um, I'm a senior animation major. Um, studying course animation, specializing in 2D. That's what I forgot, sorry. <laughs> I forgot to ask for folks to share their role on the project. I swear we did this two other <laughs> nights. Um, we're going with it. So uh, AJ, could you tell us what you worked on for the project? All right, my uh, primary responsibility is on this project was basically anything involving the uh, toxic waste monster you're gonna see. I did all the storyboarding and uh, animation for the scenes involving the monster. Thank you. Sorry about that. Hey, guys, tell us what you were talking about. <laughs> um, I was, I guess, the director of the project. Um, I wrote most of the script and made sure people were on track. I also animated three scenes and did most of the character design work except the monster. Uh, hi, I'm Cricket. I'm a 2D animation senior. I'm actually graduating in a few days. Yay! Woo! Um, <laughs> and uh, I worked on um, just a, a few of the scenes that um, uh, didn't involve the monster, just involved a blob and bot, which you should be seeing shortly. But yeah. All right. And last but certainly not least. Hi everyone, I'm D'Angelo Jackson. I am a 2D animation major and I am a senior. Um, what I did on this project, I just basically helped around when there was needed. Um, Majority-wise, I just worked on the environments in the background. And I also animated some two, two scenes here. There's a character animation and stuff like that. I just did bottom blob and just that, really. Awesome. So as, um, as we move through, obviously there's a ton of work that went into this project. So I'm gonna kind of lay the land here for what we're gonna try to do, because we're kind of experimenting with how this works on Twitch. So I'm super excited. Um, this is, again, this is an interactive uh, animation. So there will be parts of that animation that will pop up and that you all will have a choice. So please let us know in chat what that choice is so that we can go ahead and facilitate that. That would be wonderful. Um, and so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to get this animation started. So if everybody's ready, can you go ahead and type in something for me in the chat? And I'm going to hit this play button and we'll get this going. Yeah. 
You guys can do it, I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> so the screen should be switching on over. There might be a little bit of a delay. So we'll be sure to sort of anticipate that. Ready, fantastic, thank you, Melissa. Frosted mango, thank you, thank you. Okay, so we're gonna get this going. Ready, 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 that's what I wanna see. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and mute the microphone as we would not want my blabbing to take away from. Dude, things have been real quiet ever since humanity was. Dude, things have been real quiet ever since humanity was wiped out by Mother Nature. Why yes, Blob. Pollution has taken quite the toll on our human friends. How about a refill on this fizzy drink of mine? Are you aware of the toxic properties of said fizzy drink? Soda contains phosphoric acid and is well known to interfere with the body's ability to absorb calcium. Not only that... Toxic waste monster! Why yes, I suppose soda pop could classify as a... No, but a literal toxic waste monster. <laughs> the only toxic thing is life on this planet. <laughs> what? Doesn't he realize that, like, he's actually literally toxic, though? Shut up, you fools! Soon you'll be gone, and I'll have all the fizzy drink to myself in this city once I spread across all of Columbus. Not on our watch, but show him your watch thing and let's teach this guy a lesson. Well, I wouldn't classify it as a watch, but my manual refers to it as the Cyber Decision Matrix 3000, where viewers can choose an attack. Quick, help Bot decide which attack to use to stop this toxic bully from spreading. Alright, let us know, folks. What are we going to use? <laughs> that was not supposed to happen. <laughs> Alright, wait, we're going to troubleshoot. Don't worry. Keep your responses. Hey, um... I don't know if anyone's ever told you this, but, um, you have beautiful eyes. <laughs> All right, what's gonna be for these choices? Are we gonna use the water gun or the environmental pamphlet? I pause the video this time. <laughs> I know, it's a tough decision. We got one, one vote for the water gun, one vote for pamphlet. It's two votes for pamphlet. It's looking like pamphlet. Here we go. <laughs> but, prepare the ritual. Reduce, reuse, reuce recycle. recycle. Reduce, reuse, reuse recycle. recycle. Reduce, reuse, reuse recycle. recycle. I suddenly feel a sense of relief. Getting toxic people out of your life will do that for you, pal. Now come on, we've got other planets to save. the beauty of YouTube. All right. Do we want to go back and see the other option? Okay. Yeah. Let's pull that back up, folks. Give me a second as I uh, fight with YouTube a little bit. Oh, good old YouTube. Good old YouTube and OBS. Destined to work together. <laughs> All right, folks. Please excuse the technical work through here. I'm going to do my best to get this situated. So let me go ahead. Ooh, an error has occurred. Let's just re-add. 
Thank you for your patience. Oh, all right. Can you hear? What is the question? Here, I can. I will paste this and you will ask it or answer Dude, it. Dude, things have been real quiet ever since humanity was wiped out by Mother Nature. Why, well, yes. All right, so you all wanna you wanna answer that while I'm fussing about in OBS? Yeah, can just, uh, you can go ahead and talk right into the microphone. Oh. So uh, we decided to change that ending because we uh, played the, when we were at the animatic stage, we played it for our class and a few others, and uh, they just didn't get it. Like, the joke just wasn't clicking, so we decided to just rework it into what you see in the final version, which uh, thankfully works a lot better. We got a much, of, much more of a funnier response that we were expecting. Great question. Okay, so I am going to do my best to get back to where we had some choices. Pollution has taken quite the toll on our human friends. We did the pamphlet. The water gun. How about a refill on this fizzy drink of mine? Are you aware of the toxic properties of said fizzy drink? Soda contains phosphoric acid and is well known to interfere with the body's ability to absorb. I suppose. Uh, planet. Like. This is how all of the sky a lesson to it as the cyber decision matrix 3000 where viewers can choose an attack quick help bot decide which attack to use to stop this toxic bully from spreading now as you all will know that this may not be the way that you would want to uh, use your mouse. okay that is <laughs> Is that really all you got? That's a great question. So we'll go ahead. We'll build some questions. I'm going to mess with this. Um, so Melissa, That's for you. do you want to go ahead and uh, ask the question for us, and then you guys can talk about uh, or respond to? So the question is, how our pitch differed from the final product. Um, the way the class worked is we all pitched our, our own ideas individually. Um, and I just, I came up with the idea like the day before. Um, and the idea was basically pretty similar to what the final result was. Um, I didn't have a script or anything written and we didn't have a villain. 
So AJ coming up with the villain um, it was good. I kind of had a villain. A tree guy. Yeah, but I didn't have a script for it. So. Yeah. But overall, it was probably like the character designs uh, were very similar to what the final product was. Um, so the question is, what made you decide to do an interactive YouTube video? Um, I've never made a game. I have no experience in like Unity or any kind of other engine. And I wanted to do some kind of um, film. And I remember emailing Liz over the summer trying to come up with a, a way to do it interactive. And then the idea of an interactive YouTube thing kind of came up. And it was cool to try it. And it, I think it worked pretty well. So, yeah. And so usually, what, and what I would recommend, because we're, again, we're kind of experimenting um, with the interactive YouTube videos in the sort of Twitch uh, format, but if you want to go ahead and see it on your own and kind of experience it as it's meant to be experienced, you would go ahead and just type in Blob and Bot into YouTube, and it's actually available there for you I to see. I uh, put a link in the chat. Oh, I did. Yeah, actually, go ahead and do that. that right in. In. So what was the... Um, so my apologies if I, Valerie, uh, Mer, it's Victoria. That's my friend. Oh, Victoria. <laughs> That's really what was the inspiration? Um, I don't know if there was a particular inspiration, Victoria. Um, I don't know. I wanted to do something that was just ridiculous. I remember telling uh, Cricket when I was coming up with the pitch that I wanted to see what I could get away with. Um, so I just came up with. I didn't even really do any other like exploration. I just came up with two crazy characters, um, came up with a story, and threw it up. I didn't really overthink it, so I think that's why it's fun and kind of wacky. So I don't know if there's a particular inspiration to it. Maybe post-apocalyptic is something I wanted to do. Um, Adventure Time kind of feel to it was another thing. So I have I have a question um, that I would love to hear everybody sort of talk about is what was it like um, sort of at the start of the semester to get everybody like on the same page? What was that experience like as a team to try to get everybody um, together to work on this this big project? Could you speak a little bit about that for the folks that are maybe haven't had a chance to do like a group project for this sort of thing? Uh, sure. Let's see. I've been in a few group projects before, but I've never really been in like a full-scale animation production like of this magnitude, so I was a little nervous, but I still felt uh, pretty confident that I could handle it, so like I think a big factor in like getting it all to click was just uh, like communication and one thing I like about this story is that it's very simple, so it was very easy for us to like come up with ideas for it and uh, contribute to it as a whole. So uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you know. One of the things that, or one of the exercises that we did to keep us all like on the same page was at very near the, very near the beginning um we did like character pose sketches which was really useful to get us like uh, acclimated to the the shapes of the characters and all that and um, we did that pretty regularly at the beginning until until we got the hang of it and then went right into storyboarding from there uh so yeah that was really yeah so you, you guys did some really like hilarious kind of character pose like exercises. Could you talk a little bit about like that and, and why you chose that? Um, so as a leader um, that like obviously designed these characters, um, I've never been in a group project really at all as far as art wise. So um, and I didn't expect my pitch to be one that we were actually going to produce. So I think it's kind of challenging to think of like how to uh, teach people how to draw the characters without like seeming too basic. I like to like uh, let people learn how to draw it just by practice, um, you know, not like holding their hand through it. So 
Um, I just pulled up some like crazy like yoga poses and really funny like kid poses. Um, and we would do that every week for like the first hour um, of class or so and I'd give feedback and we'd kind of work on how to change it. And the characters kind of change a little bit too. If you look on like the, like the splash screen is like the initial pitch um, drawing that I did and the characters kind of changed a little bit as we got more comfortable with them. So yeah, that was the process for that. Angela, did you want to speak a little bit to what it was like to kind of like get used to working in like a team environment and so forth? Yeah, sure. Um, so just like the rest of these people, um, this is like my first big project work is as a team, as a fallen animator. animator. Um, yeah, it was just like we just kind of just like try basically stay on track, which we did. Um, for me, I kind of had a little bit of a rough start at first, just like, just kind of like connected to the team, but as time go on, just like mainly communication-wise, and we managed to get this really cool, really cool production done. And yeah, just like, just keeping up with each other, just like connecting and just make sure everyone's on track and make sure we're on the same level, which we turned out to do pretty good. I mean, I say we did a pretty good job with yeah. doing all that. And yeah, we just worked so well as a team and yeah, definitely learned a lot from doing this project. So Melissa has a great question. Um, do the characters have backstories? That is a great question. Um, they do not have backstories. That was one of the first questions that um, I think AJ asked when we sort of came together as a team. And I was kind of okay with that, you know, instead of trying to make something up on the fly. Um, because I liked the way that we like, sort of wrote the story together. We had like a Google Doc and we were just, you know, throwing out different ideas um, and not really having any, like, any limits on the characters, even design-wise. Like, um, I think Cricket kind of took Bot, you know, sort of as her own and changed him a little bit, um, which I liked. You know, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, so I think that looseness or almost lack of effort in my development kind of paid off in the end because it. Um, I think people were more excited when the characters felt like they were their characters a little bit. So. starting to get the hang of this this YouTube interaction through a different interface. All right, let's see here. So what we can do is we can actually pull up some behind the scenes. So we have some things um, that are sitting on the uh, sort of on the computer right now for what our artists here have worked on or worked on throughout the semester to bring these characters to life. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and pull it up on the screen, and I'll have um, whoever's work that we're previewing, we'll talk a little bit about their process, so you guys will have a chance to see uh, what it takes to actually bring a character to life, what kind of tools that we're using here, um, and just the, the thought process from a student's perspective. Um, so let me go ahead and bring that on over. And in the meantime, if you have other questions for our amazing artists here, feel free to um, throw them up to chat. We'll get that situated. I don't have the Jeopardy music, so <laughs> go with it. You can hear my clicking, it's going to be really exciting. character poses that we did for exploration in the beginning. I thought those were really, really, really fun to do. Um, also in general, I think um, I really like cleaning up animation. So like putting the final lines and color on everything because it's just, I don't know, I, I get really in the zone and it 
uh, it just feels good. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah, okay, so um, <laughs> uh, what I have here is uh, one of the scenes from the short. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, take you through it from beginning to end. Uh, hopefully, we'll see what happens here. Just a second. It is not apparent to those in the audience. What tool are you using? Like, what are you demoing? So for animation, we use a software called Toon Boom Harmony. Um, so that's what this is. Um, and uh, so this was, um, yeah, I think this is the like storyboard and rough animation phase. see here I kind of just loosely like drew out some forms and did lip sync and stuff um, which I think for the rough animation I accidentally put the mouths on the same layer as everything else but it's okay we can overlook that um, so yeah just kind of rough forms and yeah stuff like that and Soft cricket. Oh, they're asking to do a little bit. I can do the mic. Sorry. <laughs> I'll put the mic closer. Cricket's already soft spoken. It's okay. It works. I'll put the mic closer. Just like I. <laughs> the Verizon guy. Can you hear me now? <laughs> okay, let me see if there's anything. If there's anything. And as you're sending through that, we have another great question from Frosted Mango. Thank you, Frosted. Um, what was the biggest thing you that everyone learned out of the experience, and would you do something like this again? It's totally fine if you can skip this. <laughs> yeah. But so first part is what was the biggest thing that everybody learned from the experience, and then the second part is would you do something like this again? Quick go around. Somebody else wants to. Yeah, you're <laughs> sorry. It's been on the hot seat. Here, I'll answer the uh, second question first. Uh, yeah, I would totally do this again. This was a very, uh, very new experience. Like I'm so used to what we call passive entertainment in terms of like making it. So making something with a more uh, interactive aspect was really new territory for me. And uh, if I were to do this again, I would. I feel like it would go a lot smoother because a lot of this process was just like figuring out how like the YouTube like annotations work, how to get that interactivity aspect of it going properly. So now that I've got a much better idea of how it works, I feel like I, we could like implement it more efficiently in whatever next project would come across. I'll go next. Um, I think I should would do this again too. Um, as students, we mainly just work on our own projects unless we just happen to pair up with someone. But um, yeah, definitely, I would definitely work. I would definitely see my biggest accomplishment within this project is just like just working on as a team, honestly, and just seeing how it works. Which is basically the general of this class is just like seeing how well you work with a team of animators and. This was definitely pretty interesting to like get a chance to do. So, to me, I honestly work through this again. Probably not. Probably not game wise, but I mean, just like as a team, just in general for animation wise, just learning, just doing new stuff is crucial. So yeah, I probably would say that's like my big accomplishment when it comes to this. Um, I 
think I learned uh, how to lead um, an animation project. I've never done that before. Uh, I do a lot of like my own like personal work, freelance work, that kind of thing. Um, and surprisingly, like a lot of the practices that I like or like the discipline that I have like worked in a team environment. Um, something that I think we're all really proud of is we set deadlines at the beginning of the project and we didn't miss a single deadline the whole semester. Um, you know, and a lot of that is not a testament to our, you know, crazy hard work. A lot of it is just smart planning and I think everybody being on the same page about where we're at and what we need to do. Um, that's probably the biggest thing I learned. Um, I would definitely do it again. I think it'd be fun to not be a director on it, um, just for like, you know, just for like another experience, because I think um, I was really overwhelmed when I started because like, people just look at you and just like wait for you to say something, you know, like in the very like initial stages of the project. Um, and I really wasn't super prepared for that. It's kind of like walking onto a set thinking you're going to be an extra and then being like the lead actor. Like it's kind of, kind of threw me for a loop. Um, but it was a good experience and I would definitely do it again. What did I learn, or what, what was my favorite thing? So there's there's difference. there's two. So like, what was one of the biggest things that you learned from the whole process? And then the second half is, would you do something like that again, or this? Um. Uh. So I've never like worked on a, a project of this caliber before, uh, especially working like with someone else's characters. Um. So, um, uh, I think most of what I learned was just, um, um, just like getting better with like, um, using someone else's characters and like staying on a model, um, and, um, like being efficient where needed, because I know sometimes I get a little bit carried away. Um, but uh, I would definitely do something like this again. I think it was really, really fun, uh, especially just like working with the group and like listening to lo-fi beats <laughs> <laughs> and working. <laughs> that's pretty nice. That's very important. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's what. Yeah. Would you do something like this again, Cricket? Um, did, did I already say that? You did answer that already. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. I got to turn my low five beats. Um, awesome. But yeah. Um, so just one more thing uh, that maybe I wanted to talk about with this. Uh, scene was these like mouths over here that are uh, used for lip sync. Um, I don't know if anybody, anyone saw them just hanging out on the corner of the screen. But, <laughs> we ran um, to the mouths to the left of the screen. <laughs> uh, I use them for rough animation to just uh, get the, I mean the mouth position so like you can see like the closed mouth and then like ah and like ooh and stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, just putting them where they need to be. But yeah, does someone else want to? Can we put somebody else on that fun spot? Um, I'll bring up this stuff for AJ here. Thank you for sharing that with us, Chris. Get a chance to see the guts behind. Give us a second, folks. We're just moving around some sample work here. All right, we are back. Sorry, moment of silence for the microphone. Here we are. All right, so uh, my primary, as I said before, my uh, primary responsibility with uh, this project was designing our uh, monster friend, Eva. So uh, let's see. 
So yeah, I was given a lot of like freedom in how I designed it. So here are like the earliest sketches, what you see here, are the earliest sketches I came up with for the monster. And basically our theme was like toxic waste and pollution. So that's the direction I went in. And yeah, there's a bunch of different iterations here that I went with. And uh, eventually I decided to go with uh, this uh, pool of toxic waste guy here. So I felt that would be like the most intimidating and also since he has like no like solid form I'd be able to have a lot of freedom with how he like moves and acts. So that would like get, that would open the door for a lot of like dynamic ideas during the production. So uh, yeah here's some other sketches and another thing I was tossing around during the production was the idea of his like limbs turning into weapons. It didn't really get that far, but uh, I jotted down some ideas, which you can see here uh, anyway. You know, just in case you want to incorporate that stuff in at any point. And uh, yeah, that's what I did. I have a, uh, another question um, for the, um, I guess this would probably be for our director. Did you have an audience in mind um, when you were sort of thinking through the story and so forth, or maybe even like with the, the YouTube thing. Mm -hmm. um, so the question was, if you couldn't hear it, um, did I have an audience in mind when I was uh, coming up with this? Uh, I would say not really. Um, I mean, I mentioned Adventure Time, things like that. Um, I guess like middle schoolish would be the audience. Um, I usually do a lot of kids work in general. So that was probably the audience. I saw that like Netflix has done a lot of work with like choose your own adventure style kids shows. So um, like definitely kind of in, you know, in that same vein, but I'm not sure I had it like a super hard audience in mind. So now that, has that changed at all now that um, you all have like sort of realized the sort of feel and gotten into the characters mm -hmm. a little bit, have you thought a little bit more about audience or ways that people might be experiencing this? Or has it just kind of stayed in the, the same kind of space? I mean, I generally say this is a kid-friendly, like, short, and uh, I'd say the whole, like, interactive film idea is, like, I think while it works very well for kids, I think it could work with anybody, really. Like, like even on Netflix, there's a lot of stuff that's not directed at kids, most famously uh, the Black Mirror episode Bandersnatch, mm -hmm. which is very much for adults, but it still works very well in the same way. easily see something like this because of the little bit of humor, the, the you know, the adorable characters. Um, I could see something like this even like in a classroom if a teacher is trying to talk a little bit about, you know, these sorts of like quirky little topics in a way that's kind of lighthearted. So like getting to think about like where would this be exhibited? Obviously maybe through OBS, not the best, <laughs> the best way because the technology um, is, is tricky to work around, but I think it's really interesting to see how uh, folks can experience that if we're, you know, facilitating it through Twitch or if we're checking it out on YouTube or if it's in the classroom. Um, I definitely think it's really neat that you guys have put something out into the world and you're testing um, that format um, to kind of generate ideas around it. That's really neat to see how that story is being told. Um, so thank you for, for answering that for me because I've been thinking about that more. We're watching the uh, project unfold over the semester. How are we doing over there, folks, in chat? Do we have other questions for our team here? And we're sort of winding down with our few minutes left. I'm actually going to scrub through here to our toxic waste monster so we can actually change this in some of our fluidity that AJ was just speaking about. Let's see here. If I can get YouTube to behave. Here we go. All right. Oh, we got a question. What was the most difficult part of this project? 
What was the most difficult part? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to start out? Yeah, sure. Uh, let's see. I'd say like the part I probably had the least like experience with was you know the technical interactive side of it. Like I've been doing animation for a while, so I already got a good idea of that process. But like getting it to function within this new like interactive field and figuring out like the specifics of how we can get it to work. That was probably like the biggest uh, head scratcher for me, but uh, luckily I feel like we got it working the way we intended. Um, I think the hardest part um, is honestly just kind of like the grind of it um, in certain aspects because the way that animation kind of works is, you know, you go through the story phase and then you go through the rough phase and then there's a long time where you're just kind of cleaning stuff up and so, you know, tying up loose ends. Um, and the way that this class works too is that we had class all day from like eight to three. Um, yeah, that. So that was obviously kind of like a full day of work, you know, just working on one project, um, which is very different from other college classes we take. Um, same number of hours per week, but just all of them in one day. So I think that was kind of a uh, little difficult at times in like keeping the energy um, positive for everybody because obviously as the leader I don't want to seem negative about it or anything like that so uh, I think luckily we were all pretty excited to work on it so it didn't really take a whole lot of effort but I think the grind in general was probably tough. Honestly I'd say having it all on that one day was like kind of helpful because it actually uh, minimized like the amount of out of class work we needed to do. So we were able to just like meet and coordinate stuff uh, much more effectively when we had like that large chunk of time every week. Did you two want to add as well to that um, for some areas of maybe experience some difficulty or how to overcome some challenge? Um. Uh, so I guess if I had to, um, like, talk specifics, there was this one scene where I had to, um, um, rig Bot's arms, which if you don't know what that means, it's like, um, instead of drawing every single frame, you work with one drawing and kind of, like, manipulate it to animate it instead, um, and uh, I was just getting really, really frustrated <laughs> with it. Um, but uh, got it working in the end, and it looks pretty good, if I do say so myself. Uh, Andrew helped me out with it quite a bit, because he's more experienced with that than I am. But um, so yeah, I'd say that was one of the hardest parts, or one of the most challenging. So I think for me, my most difficulty part of doing this is like just trying to like basically I try, try to stay in the same style as some as everyone else because we're all working on the same project, but each of us we all got like a different style to create and blah and blah. So I just kind of make it a little bit challenging to like kind of like have to redo style and shape it like once a week. Just so I can actually get the correct, correct like size into each other's work, and also of course just like animating like the lip sync in the course, just making sure the colors right and make sure that there's no marks just like peeking out of nowhere. Just like making sure everything's correct and stuff like that. I say that's like my challenging part of just like doing this project, just like the animated part of it. And I think that. Um we have another wonderful question. Um, I think that's from your brother Matt, correct? Yeah, that's okay. him. Sorry to put you on blast, Matt. Um, so what percentage do you all think you've edited out of the final animatic? Not that I much, much, honestly. Yeah. We just I think, yeah, I don't think it was as much like cutting as it was just like reworking. Like, like we said earlier, that one joke with the uh, exorcism scene was uh, very different before, so. I think the only, that was the only part we needed to really rework though. Everything else was pretty much in from the beginning. 
And so my, my question was sort of, um, uh, sort of conclude for the evening would be what advice would you give folks in the audience for um, just taking on a project like this? What, what piece of advice would you give them? The playlist Lo-Fi Beats on Spotify is your friend. It's your best friend. Even if you don't like Lo-Fi, it's your best friend. <laughs> uh, I would say, like, for any creative project in general, but especially animation, like, try to do as much iterating as early as possible. Because, like... Because it's very important to like have a nice solid idea going into like production because like changing things it can be very you know time consuming and costly like like we said with that joke that was still in the uh, animatic stage so we were able to change it very easily because it was still very much in the rough like storyboard stage so yeah, changing that wasn't that big of a hindrance to the project overall. So yeah, like I said, if you're gonna change things, make sure you do it early before you're really like into the flow of production. Great, uh, any parting words you can do before we go offline? Uh, yeah, um, just, even though it's like, a, even though it's not just gonna be hard and just, Sometimes it can be difficult. And, um, I know our students are basically know, but those who really don't know, just enjoy as much of it as you can. Cause I mean, we're doing basically what we want to do, and I wouldn't change any single moment of it really. And I was lucky enough to work with like two good friends, and of course me and AJ too. Just having to work along with him, just getting on was pretty awesome too. So just also just like if you work on a team, just make sure you get to know the people as you work around, cause they could be your really good friends at the end and just, you know, just really good people that you could so, stay in contact with in the future. And yeah, just share every single moment of it, you know, don't take this for granted. I think that's wonderful, wonderful advice from everybody. So I want to thank everyone for tuning in for this evening show. I do, um, I do know that we had some technical difficulties, but some really great work was completed for the semester. And I certainly would encourage all of you to head on over to YouTube give it a watch in its proper format. Certainly don't let my curating of this evening, uh, you know, be the final experience you have with this amazing animation. Um, be sure to check it out and uh, let us know what you think. Um, and thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow night from 7 to 8 p.m. for Grandma RPG, which will be the first time that we're doing a tabletop experience. So we look forward to seeing you then. All right, good night.